Welcome guys again. So last time we saw chapter number six, that was some continuous probability distribution. And before that we saw chapter five, that was the discrete probability distributions. And we went over lots of things in these two chapters. And uh, because, you know, uniform distribution, Poisson distribution for the discrete probability distribution, and then after the normal distribution, right? And uh, some kind of, uh, you know, this thing that the connection between the continuous dis probability distribution with the Poisson distribution, and we saw plenty of examples too. Chapter number seven, there is the function of random variables, and that is the optional clearly mentioned in the book, and that's why we don't want to go for that one, but we are going to start today. Chapter number eight, there is a fundamental sampling distribution and the data description. Let me share my screen with you so that you can uh, see this one, fundamental sampling distributions and data descriptions. So if you read this one very slowly, you will come to know what we mean actually by a sample, a random sampling, because here we are going to see the random sampling, the main heart of this chapter, there is article 8.2, that is a central limit theorem. There is a main heart of this chapter and it gives you lots of other benefits too. When we are going to start that article 8.2, I will let you know the benefits of this uh, central limit theorem. Lots of other fields of statistics are open based on this one. They are based on the central limit theorem. And uh, that's fine. So let me just start with the random sampling. You can see here, the outcome of a statistical experiment may be recorded either as a numerical value or as a descriptive representation. When a pair of dias is tossed and a total is the outcome of interest, we record a numerical value. However, if the students, if a students of a certain school are given blood taste and the type of blood is of interest, then the descriptive representation might be more useful because you can see over here, whenever the type of blood is there at that time, it is either A, B plus or minus, A plus or minus, B plus or minus, O plus or minus. So there are eight different categories, right? But instead of that, suppose you toss a coin at that time, uh, uh, I mean to say that when a pair of dice is tossed, pair of pair of dice is tossed, not toss a coin that is either head or uh, tail, there's a description. But if you toss a dice, that means you're going to get some numericals, either one or two or three or five or six like this, right? So there are two ways. One is the numerical values, another one is the descriptive values, and I give you the example. So in this chapter, we focus on sampling from the distribution or population and study such important qualities of the sample mean and sample variance. So please keep this in mind, and then we are going to learn over here the sample mean and sample variance. We which will be of vital importance in other chapters, in future chapters, chapter nine, chapter 10, like this. In addition, we attempt to give, uh, we attempt to give what uh, the introduction to the whole, to the role that the sample mean and the sample variance will play in statistical inference. So this chapter, that is a fundamental thing for the statistical inference what we are going to learn in future. So please keep this thing in mind and let me just start with the population and the samples. The population and the samples are nothing but, uh, we begin with the section, the section by the population and the samples and both are mentioned broadly in chapter one. So we are going to generalize this idea. However, much more needs to be presented about the mean and the samples and the populations or population and the samples in this chapter. The totality observation, please keep this thing in mind, the, in context of the concept of the random variables. So we are going to see now the mean and the or I mean, samples and the population in terms of the random variables. Because you know this thing that we have started random variables since chapter four. So then after we have just extending all these ideas, whatever we have done in chapter one, two, and three, all these things, they are extending in terms of the random variables. So we are still on our theme that we are extending the mean and I mean to say um, uh, population and samples or mean variance in terms of the random variables. The totality, totality of observation with which we are concerned whether their number be finite or infinite constitutes what we call the population. So total of number of observations, that's just the population, right? As usual, you know this thing. And there was a time when the word 
population refer to observation obtained from the statistical study about the people. Anyway, guys, so let me start with the first definition, what we mean by the population. The definition of the population that is given over here, the population consists of a totality of the observation with which we are concerned. So population is the totality of the observation of which we are concerned. This population could be finite, could be infinite. So please keep this thing in mind uh, with some finite size or sometimes it is the size are infinite, something like that. Right. It is clearly mentioned over here. If you look at over here, some examples are given here. The number of observations in the population is defined to be the size of the population. If there are 600 students in the school whom we classified according to the blood type, we say that we have a population of size 600. 600 is just a finite number, right? So the numbers on the car in the deck, the heights of the uh, residents in a certain city, right? Heights of the residents in a certain city and the lands of the face lands of the face in a particular lake are the examples of the population with a finite size, right? It could be finite size, but it could be, again, it could be some discrete number or some continuous number too, because land of a face in some pond, right? In some lake, particular lake or heights, they are the continuous numbers, the number of students, discrete numbers, so like this. In each case, you can see that our observation is a finite number. So that's why it's mentioned over here, it's a finite number. Same way, we have one example based on the infinite number of observation obtained by measuring the atmospheric pressure every day from the past on into the future. Or all measurements of the depth of a lake, right? From any con conceivable position are the examples of population whose size are infinite because you cannot predict anything, right? It could be how deep it is, you don't know. And it's a real number. So I would consider that one as the infinite example. So some finite populations are there, some infinite populations are there. And you can see that each observation in a particular, uh, in, in a population is a value of a random variable X having some probability distribution. So each observation in a population, each observation, please keep this thing in mind. Suppose you have X is each observation in a population is a value of a random variable X having the probability distribution FX. So this X is FX, uh, is attached with FX. If one is uh, inspecting items coming off an assembly line of efforts, so assembly line for efforts, then each observation is a population might be a value zero or one. And you can use the Bernoulli distribution like this, bx one p, that is p is a probability, p to the power x and q to the power one minus x, p plus q is equal to one. You know these things, so q is nothing but one minus p. Where here zero indicates this x equal to zero and one, so zero indicates the non-defective item and one indicates the defective item like this. So when we refer the, uh, we can say hereafter to a binomial population, just keep this thing in mind, say when we refer hereafter to a binomial distribution, a normal distribution, or in general, the population FX, we shall mean a population observation, population whose observation are value of the random variable having a normal distribution or binomial distribution, normal distribution, probability distribution FX, et cetera, respectively. So that's what we mean. If you want, I can re revise, I can repeat this line that when we refer hereafter to a binomial population, a normal distribute, normal population, or in general, a population FX, we shall mean a population whose observations are values of a random variable having binomial distribution or normal distribution like this. Okay, so my next definition is nothing but the sample, you know this thing that sample is a subset of a population, just like your definition in chapter one, sample is nothing but the subset of a population. In any sampling process that pro, uh, produces inference that cons consistently overestimate or consistently underestimate some aspects of the population is said to be biased. This sample, sometimes they are biased, they are not biased, so you have to be very careful about this thing. To eliminate any possibility of bias in the sampling procedures, it is desirable to choose a random sample in the sense that the observations are made independently at random, uh, at the random. So please, whenever we are going to take our samples at that time, our intention is always there to have the independent samples, right? Just to avoid the biasness of the samples because some of the sample categories, they are biased towards the population. So towards the event. So please keep this thing in mind. And that's why based on this independent uh, the event or independent 
the uh, an independent random variables because now we are going to attach this one with our random variables. So let x1, x2, xn be n independent random variables, each having the sample probability or some the same probabilities or probability distribution fx. Let x1, x2, xn be a be n independent random variables, each having the same probability distribution fx, define x1, x2, xn to be a random samples of size n. So capital X1, capital X2, capital xn to be a random sample, okay, random sample of size n, size 1, x1, size 2, x2 means small x1 is from capital X1, small x2 is from capital X2, something like that. Um, so define x1, x2 up to xn to be a random sample of size n from the population fx and write its joint probability distribution f of x1 to x f of x1 times f of x2 times f of xn because x1, x2, xn, they are independent. That's why you can write like this. If they are not independent, you know this thing is not possible. And that's what we have been discussing since a long time, since chapter four or chapter three, I would say. Then after, I just would like to mention a little bit about some important statistics. So some important statistics uh, that is really very important to go through this part very slowly. Our main purpose in selecting random samples is to elicit information about the unknown population parameters. Suppose, for example, that we wish to arrive at a conclusion concerning the population of coffee drinkers in the United States who's pre, um, who prefer a certain brand of coffee, right? Now, coffee drinker in the United States who prefer a certain brand of coffee, you never know how many population is there or how big sample size would be. It would be impossible to question every coffee drinker Americans in order to compute the value of the parameter P representing the population proportion, right? It's not possible. You can go to all the coffee drinkers. So first of all, out that how many of them are coffee drinkers. And then after you need to figure it out that you need to ask all of them individually, but that is absolutely impossible. So what we are going to do, so instead of large random, <clears throat> instead of Instead, a large random sample is selected and the proportion P, P cap, you can say, of people in this sample favoring the brand of coffee in question is calculated. The value P cap is now used to make an inference concerning the true proportion P, right? So P cap is nothing but just keep this thing in mind, this uh, mind that the value P cap is to make an inference concerning the true proportion true proportion P. Now, P cap is a function of the observed values in the random sample, random sample, since random samples are possible from the sample population. We would expect P cap to vary somewhat from sample to sample. This P cap that varies from sample to sample, please keep this thing in mind also. That is, pcap is a value of a random variable because it now varies. It's a value of a random variable we represent it uh, and uh, that, re that we represent by capital P. And such random variable that is called the statics. So definition of static is nothing but any function of the random variable constituting a random sample. Any function of random variable, function of random variable, which constitute, which constitutes any function of random, va random variable, which constitutes a random sample that is a statist statistics. That is your statistics. Okay. And uh, then after, uh, as we, as you know, that we went over the definition of mean x bar equal to in chapter four, one summation of xi in terms of random variables, of course, summation of xi I runs from one to n divided by n. But here it's a function of random variables. So just look at over here, mean as a, in a, as a function of random variable. So not that statistics X bar assumes the value X bar equal to one. So I'm saying XI equal to one, 20 divided by N when X1 assumes the value X1. See, if I equal to one, X1 assumes the value small X1. Capital X2 assumes the value small X2. Capital X3 assumes the value small X3. Dot, 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 capital XN assumes the value small XN. I told you just previously. <clears throat> The term sample mean is applied to both the statistics X bar and is computed value X bar. Then after we saw the medium definition, medium definition is Xn plus one divided by two. We saw this definition in chapter one, of course, 
and in terms of random variables, we saw this uh, definition in chapter four also. Again, we are going to attach this thing. Uh, we are going to load this thing in terms of the random variables. So let me see. Sample median is x bar is equal to if your n is or xn plus one by two, and if n is even xn by two plus xn by two plus one. Just keep this in mind of this n by two that is in the bracket, n by two and plus one like this. Suppose n equal to even, so suppose four, four by two is two. So x two and n equal to four by two. You have to first take that, please consider the bracket. Four by two is two plus one, so three. So it is x two plus x three. Just take second and third value and then divide by two. So like this, the sample median is also a location measure that shows the middle value of the sample as we know. And examples for both the samples mean and sample median can be found, of course, in the first chapter. And the mode is nothing but the repetition of the values. The mode is the value of the sample that occurs most often. Let's look at the first example. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Seven, eight, nine, and ten values. You can take over here. Take the summation of x one, x two, x three up to x n. I runs from one to ten divided by ten because n equal to ten. So that's how you can find your mean. Then after to find the median because n equal to even n equal to ten, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So n equal to ten and ten is an even number. So here it is ten by two equal to five. Ten by two five plus one six. So x five and x six divided by two. But before that you have to arrange all these numbers in the in the ascending order. So smallest is the first one. Then then after you can increase the number and once you increase in the ascending order only after that you can go for the median you know this thing again refer chapter one chapter four <clears throat> so once you find this median and then after you can see do you have any kind of repetition over here so you can see that uh, <coughs> uh, the sample mode uh, sample mode zero point uh, i would say 0.43 is over here as well as 0.46 is a repetition. So that is the mode, that's the sample mode, right? Then after I just would like to go for the variability measure of a sample, the sample variance standard deviation and range. The sample variance standard deviation and range with respect to the, what? With respect to random variable, right? And, so we have some examples are given over here. I don't want to go through all these examples, but the sample variance is given by. Now, because you know variance is sigma square is equal to an expected value in terms of expected value, random variable in chapter four. We learned this thing that expected value sigma or variance sigma square is nothing but, yes, please. Uh, that was uh, what sigma square was. <laughs> Uh, I would say that was nothing but summation of x minus nu square and f of x, right? Summation x minus nu, nu is the mean whole square times f of x. And in terms of continuous, if x is, for this is for x discrete, x is continuous, integration negative infinity to infinity, x minus nu whole square and fx. We learned this thing in the definition chapter four, definition 4.3, page number 120, if I'm not wrong. Okay, so... Here, in terms of samples, my definition is slightly different. That is summation of xi. See, now, here it is. My, my mean is given over here. Sorry, my mean is given over here, x bar, right? Mean, because if you go back, look at over here, mean is given x bar. Previously, it was given by nu in chapter four. Now, it is x bar in terms of random variables. So, please keep this in mind. So, mean remains the same. xi, previously, it was simply x x runs from uh, one, two, three, up to so on. Here it is xi. And this xi is nothing but your random variables, right? x1, x2, xn represent n number of random variables. And we divide by one over n minus one. Why we divide by one over n minus one? It is clearly mentioned over here that you can go, you're going to learn this thing. You're going to learn the reason of dividing n minus one in chapter nine. So let me just write right now, accept this thing. So. And the alternative de definition of this variance, this S, S squared is this one. There's no variance in terms of random variables. You know this thing that we learned the alternating the alternative definition in chapter four for your variance sigma square. Here we do have the alternating definition of S square and that is given on the back page and just over here. S square equal to one over N times N minus one. 
and summation of xi square minus summation of xi whole square. This is the another alternating derivative. So s square is a variance of the random variable. And if you take the positive square root of this variance, you're going to get the standard deviation, standard deviations. So you know this thing, right? Here also positive square root that will provide you the standard deviation. And that's why I would just like to go for my first example over here. That is a com comparison of a coffee price is at four randomly selected grocery stores in a San Diego sold increases from the previous month of, so previous month it was something different, but now it is 12, 15, 17. It is now increased by 12, 15, 17 and 20 cents for one pound. Find the means previously, suppose it is the one pound coffee price was suppose in the first store, it is 90, it is 80 cent. Now it is 80 plus two. So it is now 92 cents. Previously in one other store, suppose it is 80 cent or suppose 85 cent. Now he is going to sell in 100 cents. That's the meaning and et cetera. Mean is because we, we require mean over here. So first of all, let me find X bar. So that is addition of 12, 15, 17, 20 divided by four, four observations. So that is 16. And XI, that is this 12, this is my X1, X2, X3, X4, right? So I can write 12 minus my mean is 16, 12 minus 16 square. Then second one is 15 minus 16 square, 17 minus 16 square, 20 minus 16 square, in between summation sign plus sign and divide by Divide, divided by number of observation four minus one, that is equal to three. That is equal to three. Use your calculator, you're going to get S square equal to 34 by three, right? So that is nothing but your, uh, uh, what we say, that is nothing but your variance, right? In terms of random variables. And we discuss about the, we don't want to go for the proof. It's just, we proved this thing previously in our uh, chapter four but I don't want to go the same type of proof, proof again. It's very simple. But standard deviation is nothing but the positive square root of the uh, variance. Variance is given by S square. Standard deviation, you can see that is positive square root. So that is given by, as you know, that is equal to S, right? S positive square root. Okay, guys. So, <clears throat> um, Yes, in chapter four, we use sigma square and positive square of square sigma square that was just simply sigma as a standard deviation. Here we are using S square and S, capital S, as a variance and standard deviation uh, respectively. So here, the second definition of variance is being used here for the second example, this example, find the variance of the data three, four, five, six, six, and seven, you can see, you can find mean, it is only in the ascending order. You can find median, six and six, they are repeated values. That means mod is, mod is six, right? So the variants are representing the numbers of the trout caught by the sample random of six fishermen on this one, on this lake. So we find this uh, summation of, because we require, look at the definition, what we require. We require summation of xi squared. So first of all, let me find x1, x2, x3, take the summation, take the summation, and then make the whole square, and make the whole square. So summation of, that is this part, summation of x1, x2, x3, and that is nothing but, uh, that is nothing but, look at over here, three plus four, seven, seven plus five, 12, 12 plus six, 18, six, 24 and 731. And if you make a square of this one, you have to make a square of this one. So 31 square, right? And then after you need X1 square. So you need to make a square of all these numbers, 9, 16, 25, 36, 36, and 49. And then add it because square and squaring and then adding. And then number of uh, your N is equal to number of observation, one, two, three, four, five, six. So your N equal to six over here. So let me just use N equal to six over here. So I just put the values over here, N equal to six and six, N and N minus one, so six and five. So my variance is this one, right? If you use this definition or other definition, you must get the same answer both ways. So please keep this thing in mind too. And standard deviation, just take the positive value, that is 1.47. Okay, and uh, some simple examples are there. Very often we ask the questions or questions from this section 8.1 and 2 because they are really very basic. Main article start, main theme starts from article 8.3 and 4, mainly 
Good. So let me go over at least one of the examples and then after we can switch over to the next article. So you can see over here 8.3 that is associated with 8.10. If you look at this example, 8.3, the reaction time for a random sample of nine subjects to a stimu stimulate were recorded as 2.5, 3.6, 3.1, 4.3, blah, blah, blah seconds. Calculate the mean and median. And same example, if you look at 8.10, so 8.3 is at H with 8.10, 8.10, find the range. Find the variance using the formula number 8.2.1. It's given the formula, so you have to stay with that formula if something is mentioned like this. If something is mentioned, you can use any one of those two formulae as square. Right, guys? So I think it is really very simple because uh, if it is mean, then naturally your mean is nothing but X bar and then take all these numbers divided by the number of observations. So that is equal to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So sum of this one divided by nine. Median, arrange these numbers in ascending order and then use the definition. Nine is an odd number, so we can go for the first one. And this way you can find X tilta because X bar is your mean X tilta. X, X tilt is your, uh, what we say, that is your median. And then after I just would like to go back, I mean to say, uh, go for example, 8.10 in a continuation. So 8.10 says that my range, what is my range? The range is the highest number minus the minimum number. Minimum is 2.5, no, 2.3, I think. So yeah, 2.3 and the highest one is, 4.3, right? So 4.3 minus 2.3, so your range is 2. Your range is 2. Nothing to write in this example, guys. So don't tell her, please. Don't force me to write anything. This is very simple. Because range is the highest number minus the smallest number, 4.3 minus 2.3. 2.3, that is equal to 2, right? And uh, then after what it says, the variance using the formula. Now for variance, you require, you know, mean is 2.5, just mean or leave, we figured it out from here. And that mean if you divide by nine, um, 3 .1, 4.3, 2.9, 2.3, 2.6, and 3.4 equal to divided by nine, and we are getting 3.2. Right, so your mean is 3.2. If you use this the, the this mean value 3.2 in a definition of S square, S square is nothing but each value 2.5 minus mean value 3.2 and whole square. 3.6 minus 3.2 whole square. 3.1 minus 3.2 whole square in between summation sign up to here and divided by n minus one. So nine minus one is eight, and you are going to get S square equal to something, some zero point blah 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 something that is your standard, uh, that is nothing but your variance. If you want to, suppose somebody asks you here, part C, find the standard deviation. Whatever the number you are getting over here for the variance, take the positive square root. That will allow you to go for the standard deviation. So I think that's not a big deal. So let me just uh, go for the next one because all the examples, they are just very simple. So I think nothing to learn. Actually, whatever the half an hour we have been discussing, that's just, I would say, in my opinion, that's just nothing but a part of the revision. So this is this was just the revision, or you can say the review. Okay, so now we are going to start Article 8.3, Sampling Distribution. Sampling distribution, the field of statistics inference is basically concerned with the generalization and the prediction. Generalization and the prediction. Look at over here. The field of statistic inference is basically concerned with the generalization and the prediction. And some examples are given over here. One of the examples that is for the very large finite population and small finite population. And the last one, you can see over here, very large finite population, just read this one. And the another one is just the finite but very small population. And the third one is nothing but just the infinite population, right? So three different categories, uh, sample is dividing, sampling, sampling is divided into three different categories, like uh, very large finite population, very small finite population and infinite population like this. And it's just same type of examples, whatever you have discussed earlier. I don't want to go through this one. If you are interested, just read this one, this page. Okay. And since the statistics is a random variable that depends only on the observed sample, it must have a probability distribution. 
I repeat, since a statistics is a random variable, as you know, statistics is a random variable that depends on the observed samples, it must have a probability distribution, and therefore that is called the sampling distribution. And the definition is something like this, a probability distribution of a statistics. So statistics, you know this thing, statistics, there is nothing but any function of the random variable constituting a random sample is called the statistics. And a probability distribution of a statistics is nothing but probability distribution attached with the statistics. If you are looking for the probability, you, if you are looking for the probability distribution of a, of a statistics, is called the sampling distribution. So now onwards, whenever I say this word, when I speak this word, the sampling distribution, it is to be understood that we are looking for the probability distribution in terms of a statistics. Okay. The sampling distribution of a statistics depends on the distribution of the population. It depends how you distribute your population. Yes, that is very important. The size of the samples and the method of choosing the sample. Method of choosing the sample, that means um, uh, method of choosing the sample, which method we are using, hypothetical testing or something like that, that we are going to see in the next chapter, but right now, some methods are there, just keep this thing in mind. I will let you know when the time will come. The probability distribution of X bar, X bar, or you can say X, yeah, probability distribution of X bar, capital X bar, is called the sampling distribution of the mean, because mean is divided, uh, denoted by X bar. So probability distribution of X bar, that is called the sampling distribution of the mean. So now, if I say X bar, that is the sampling distribution, Right, sampling distribution means probability distribution of the statistics. And we are looking for the mean of that one. So that's why it is called the sampling distribution of the mean. And uh, the sampling distribution of X bar and X square, that is the variance, right? As the mechanisms from which we will be able to make the inference of the parameter nu and sigma square, right? This parameter nu, that is the mean, Previously, chapter four, chapter one, sigma square, chapter four again, page number 120. The sampling distribution of X bar with the sample size N is a distribution that results when the experiment is conducted over and over, right? Experiment is conducted so many times, always with the sample size N. And the many values of X bar results, right? Many values of, because over and over you are doing the experiments, that means you have many values of X bar. And this sampling distribution then describes the variability of the sample variable, uh, sample averages around the population mean new, around the population mean new. And in the case of the soft drink machine, knowledge of the sampling distribution of X bar arms the analysis with the knowledge of the typical discrepancy between the observed X bar value and true new value. Anyway, just the example. Okay, so sampling distribution of means and the critical limit. Now you can see over here, guys, X bar is nothing but actually one over and X1 plus X2. The first important sampling distribution to be considered is that of the mean X bar. So this X bar equal to one over and X1 plus X2 up to Xn, right? This has a normal distribution. This X bar now, this has the normal distribution with mean equal to, we are going to denote by nu x bar, mean equal to one over n, nu, one, nu plus nu plus nu up to nu, n times. So that means n times nu. So n and n will get canceled out because this is n times nu. This is nothing but n times nu because nu plus nu plus nu n times n times nu. n and n will get canceled out. That means nu x bar for the sampling distribution, uh, sampling distribution, or mean of the central sampling distribution that is exactly same as the mean, whatever we have learned for the random variable. So new X bar, because this N and N, N one over N and N times new, N and N will get canceled out, it is new. So new X bar equal to new. So mean, mean remains the same, but that's not the case over here. Sigma square X, sigma square X was the variance chapter four, again, page 120. Sigma square X, that is one over N square and sigma square, sigma square, sigma square, n number of samplings are there, random variables. So n terms, so it is n sigma square, n times sigma square. One n and this one n will get canceled out. So you're going to get sigma square divided by n. So whenever you are working with a sampling distribution and its variance at that time, variance is not like chapter four, but now the variance is given by sigma square by n, sigma square, and that is denoted by sigma square x bar, sigma square x bar. 
right? That is given by sigma square by n. So naturally, my standard deviation is sigma divided by square root of n. Positive square sigma divided by square root of n. Because variance, that is always, this is the positive one. Sigma square standard deviation is the positive one. So if we are sampling from a population with the unknown distribution, either finite or infinite, the sampling distribution of x bar will still be approximately the normal mean nu because it remains the same normal mean nu, right? And the variance is little different, sigma square by n, and that leads us to a very standard important thing that is called the central limit theorem. So central limit theorem says that central limit theorem, if x bar is the mean of the random sample, uh, sample of size n taken from the population, Right now, guys, please be careful. Size n taken for the pub from the population. Which what do you mean by this size n? What should be the number? We'll discuss. If x bar is the mean of a random sample of size n taken from a population with the mean nu and the finite variance, here it is mentioned sigma square. I would prefer to write sigma square divided by n because just now we saw this thing that it is variance is sigma square by n. So don't write sigma square, just write sigma square by n, guys, I request you. I don't say it's a mistake because it's mentioned in terms of new uh, taken from the population. We are just talking about the population. That's why he has mentioned new and sigma square. But actually in terms of the random variable, it is now sigma square by n. And that's why my z-score, Z score in the previous chapter in normal distribution that was z equal to x minus nu divided by sigma. Here it is x, not small x, but now capital X, capital X bar. That is the sample random variables, uh, random variable, right? Send random variable mean minus nu divided by the random variables minus nu divided by sigma standard deviation not sigma, it is sigma divided by square root of n because my standard deviation over here, that is, see, look at here, sigma square by n, that's a variance, so positive square root sigma divided by square root. That's the reason you have to have over here sigma divided by square root of n. And as n tends to infinite standard normal distribution, why standard normal distribution? That's a z-score. z-score means mean zero, variance one. So mean zero and standard deviation or variance one standard deviation one, right? So this formula now we are going to see, this is the additional term over here, sigma divided by square root of n, that's the additional term. Otherwise, formula is exactly same as we have used in the last chapter, chapter five, right guys? <clears throat> okay, so that is really very important. Now let's talk about the, which type of values are there for n, sample size. If sample size, normal approximation, the normal approximation for X bar will generally be good if N is greater than 30 provided the population distribution is not terribly skewed. You know that uh, sometimes your normal distribution is right skewed, sometimes it is left skewed, something like this, like this and left skewed or like this and right skewed. But if it is not terribly skewed, little left, the right skewed or little bit of left skewed, if that is like that, and if your N is greater than or equal to 30, you are good to go. So normal approximation of X bar will generally be good if X is N is greater than or equal to 30 provided the population distribution is not terribly skewed. If n is less than 30, the approximation uh, total population, sample size, n is strictly less than 30, the approximation is good only if the population is not too different from the normal distribution. So if you have normal distribution curve and it is not too different, population is not too different than the normal distribution in that case, and less than 30 is a valid number. If the population is known to be normal, right? Normal distribution and as stated above, if the population is known to be normal, the sampling distribution of X bar will allow a normal distribution, distribution exactly no matter how small the size of the sample. The sample size n equal to 30, actually n equal to 30 equality is involved over here, but specifically n equal to 30 is a guideline to use the central limit theorem. N equal to this is a very important thing. N equal to 30 is a guideline to use the central limit theorem. However, as this statement of the theorem implies, the pre-assumption of normality of the distribution of X bar becomes more accurate as N grows larger. Larger the sample size, larger the estimation, right? Larger the estimation. And some figures are given, to, given over here, see? just uh, normal distribution, 
and it, this one is normal but little bit little bit of right skewed look at over here so and sample size is small but because it's little right skewed it's a valid number and equal to very small number that's not allowed okay guys let's now solve the examples just look at this first example example 8.4 we are going to go through a few of the examples over here and then after we start solving the exercise problem and then we'll stop I don't want to go for the other articles, but just exercise problems and we'll stop. And then after, in the next class, we are going to learn another two articles, that is article 8.5, sampling distribution of S squares, and one more distribution that is called T distribution. After that, article 8.7 is F distribution, but we are not going to learn F distribution, just T distribution. Once you know this T distribution or what exactly it means, then after, I think that is more than sufficient. Okay, so right now let me just focus over here in this example on this example, example 8.4. <clears throat> An electrical foam manufacturer's light bulbs that have a length of life that is approximately normally distributed. See here, normal, normal distribution is only given to you. With mean, mean value is new equal to 800 hours that is provided to you, right? I won't say, you can say new, but actually technically it is new suffix x bar that is equal to 800 because we want to match with the definition 800 hours and a standard deviation standard deviation is 40 hours now standard deviation that means it is sigma is given to you please keep this in mind because the electrical form manufacturing is like bulb we need to find the standard deviation with respect to the random variable x bar or very random variable x in terms of means you can say x bar so that is standard deviation x bar that is given like this sigma divided by square root of n n equal to electric uh, how many yes find the probability the random samples of 16 bulbs so n equal to 16 so sigma x bar equal to sigma of that is equal to 16 so i am going to start like this so let me just share let me stop sharing this book and let me start sharing my white bar so we are going to get example number 8.4 book page number two three four okay it says that uh, the sampling distribution of x bar will be approximately normal right the sampling distribution you have to mention this thing for the accuracy the sampling distribution x bar will be approximately normal or you can say the sampling distribution of x bar will be or is approximately normal is approximately normal with you can write new x bar equal to new of course and that is equal to 800 and I would say that sigma x bar that is equal to sigma square root of n and that is equal to sigma is given to you 40 n is given to you that is equal to square root of 16 that is equal to 40 divided by 4 and that is equal to 10. Okay, now you have this one that then after what I'm going to do. So my, uh, what is the question? Okay. Find the probability that the random sample of 16 bulbs will have an average life of less than 775 hours. Okay, less than 775 hours. That means we are looking for, we are asked something like this, find the probability of uh, X bar is less than 775 hours, right? And as you know that we have to convert because we don't have any table for this one. We have to convert this one in terms of Z score. So what we are going to do, so corresponding to, I would say this like this, corresponding to, corresponding to X bar is equal to 775, 775 we have we have if you want to draw the picture you can draw the picture also i will let you know we have z is equal to yes please x bar minus new divided by sigma square root of n always write the definition first don't uh, try to write it down 
directly and nu was given to you 800 and sigma over n we just figured it out that is equal to 10 so 775 800 so it is naturally negative 2.5 anyone can calculate this one right so z is equal to now if you draw the picture again picture is must if you draw the picture your mean is given to you that is new x bar is equal to 800 and less than 775 775 is over here less than means this part 775 and you are given sigma x bar is equal to 10 sigma x bar equal to 10 please draw the picture like this okay and then after hmm, it was this one okay then after so probability of z less than negative 2.5 use your table z score normal distribution table you are going to get let me use this one uh, 0 0.0062 uh, right so that is equal to 0 0.0062 so just use this negative 2.5 value you're going to get this one so it's simple it's not hard so one very important application of central limit theorem is the determination of reasonable values of the population mean nu. So central limit theorem gives us the, or with the help of central limit theorem, one can determine the reasonable values of the population mean nu. Reasonable values, that is the of population means probability population mean new topics such as hypothesis testing estimation quality control and many other make uh, make use of central limit theorem i told you that central limit theorem has lots of lot of applications one of the applications we are using central limit theorem in hypothesis testing then estimation then quality control estimation and many other statistical things as well as the inference too so in the case of the central limit theorem, the parameter of the interest is always, please keep this in, is mean new. Parameter of interest is always new. So I, I just would like to save this file, save this one in the folder and uh, and then after, let me clear the board. And let me stop sharing this one. Let's go for the next example. So let me share my book again. So my next example is like this. Automobile parts. Automobile parts. An important manufacturing process produces cylindrical component parts for the automobile industry. It is important that the process produce parts having a mean diameter of 5 millimeter, the engineer involved conjectures that the population mean is 5 millimeters. An experiment is conducted in which 100 parts produced by the process are selected randomly and the diameter measured on each. It is known that the population standard deviation sigma equal to 0.1. Standard deviation sigma is equal to 0.1. Sigma is equal to 0.1, okay, millimeter. The experiment indicates a sample average diameter X bar is 5.027 millimeters. Does this sample information appear to support or refute the engineer's conjecture? That's the question. We are given X bar equal. To, so if probability is extremely small, in that case, I would say that this sample information, whatever is provided to us, doesn't support the engineer's conjecture. If your probability is higher, 0.5 or more than that, in that case, I will conclude that the sample information appear over here that supports the engineer's conjecture. If it is less than five or extremely small, I would say it's, it refutes. <clears throat> okay, so let me solve this example. Now guys, look at over here. It says something like this. Um, in this example, this, this example reflects a kind of problem often posed and solved with the hypothesis testing machinery introduced 
in our next chapter. That's fine. But right now, just keep this in mind, this thing, it's a kind of hypothesis testing, hypothesis testing example, because central limit theorem that is being used in hypothesis testing, as I just now I told you. Whether the data support or refute the conjecture depends on their probability that data similar to those obtained in the experiment. Here, the experiment data is given to us x bar equal to 5.027, right? And you are given the diameter, the actual diameter is 5, and the experiment data is 5.020. That means variation is 0 0.027. Variation is 0 0.027. So please keep this thing in mind. That means whenever I draw the normal curve, 5 is my mean and 0 0.027 on this side, 0 0.027 on left side. That's how I'm going to draw my normal curve. Because I am both the sides, I am adding and subtracting 5 point under 0 0.027. That means we are going to write little different over here little different in terms of x minus 5, 5.025. But as I told you, we are moving on both sides equally of 5, x bar minus 5, absolute value. Absolute value means this side, both the sides, is greater than or equal to 0 0.027, right? Because why greater than or equal to? Because look at here, the experiment indicates a sample average diameter, uh, diameter is x bar equal to 5.027 millimeters. Does its sample information appear to support, okay, this one, okay. <clears throat> so that's the reason uh, engineers conjecture. That's the reason we just write this one in this form. So in other words, I can say that if the mean is five, what is the chance that X bar will deviate as much as 0 0.27 millimeter? X bar is deviate 0 0.27 millimeter, right? And that's the reason I'm going to write in this way, deviate 0 0.027 millimeter more than that. So let me start something like this. Look at here, guys. Whether the data supports or refute the conjecture depends on the probability the data similar to those of uh, those obtained in the experiment, x bar equal to this one, can readily uh, occur when, in fact, nu equal to 5, mean is 5. In other words, how likely it is um, that one can obtain x bar greater than or equal to this one with n equal to 100, it is, is it given? Yes, n equal to 100 is given to us, n equal to 100. If the population mean is nu equal to five, that is also given to us, okay. If this probability, if this probability suggests that x bar equal to is not unreasonable, the conjecture is not refuted. If the probability is quite low, as I told you, then it is refuted, right? Good. So that is the meaning. Let me solve this example. Let me just stop sharing this screen and let me share my whiteboard. Okay. So example number now, what is the number? It is eight point case. Oh, is this one actually a case study. So case study is point one. Case study 8.1. Case study is always the practical example. Always keep this thing in mind. So I have here, uh, as I told you that my normal distribution, normal curve, and my mean is nothing but nu x bar is equal to five. And I have to go over here, zero point. So 5.027, I'm adding 0 0.27 over here. I'm subtracting 0 0.727 somewhere over here. So I'm going to get here, uh, what, uh, 0 0.27, so it is 73. Right, so it is zero point. Uh, my bad, four point nine seventy three five minus point zero twenty seven is this one. Okay, sounds good. So my probability of x bar minus five, as I told you, is greater than or equal to zero point zero twenty seven. That is equal to now, guys, look at here. If you have, suppose, absolute value of uh, absolute value of x is less than or equal to five, you can say negative five is less than x is less than or equal to five. That means your x lies between negative five and five. Negative five and five. That is the meaning. But suppose I say that absolute value of x is greater than five. That means it lies outside. It lies outside. That means I can say that either x is greater than five or x is less than negative five, because now it is lying over here, right? So that is the meaning. Exactly same over here, x minus five is greater than this one. That means I can write same as the probability, probability of 
uh, x bar minus 5 because I'm remo removing absolute sign. So x bar minus 5 is greater than or equal to 0 0.025 plus probability of x bar minus 5 is less than or equal to negative of 0 0.027. 0 0.027, right? But actually they are same on both the sides. Look at over here. If you look at this part and if you look at this part, these both the parts are same. That means it is nothing but two times probability of X bar minus five is greater than or equal to 0 0.027. Or you can write this one, 0 0.027, right? But how can you find this probability? This probability is nothing but your, yes, that is equal to two times and probability of probability of x bar minus 5 actually it is wrong to write is greater than or equal to this one that sounds good but x bar minus 5 because here we are converting this one in terms z score right because my new is equal to 5 and my z is nothing but x bar minus new actually new x bar if you want new x bar divided by sigma square root of n so that is equal to x bar is nothing but uh, that is equal to x bar is the uh, same thing, right? So it will be like this x bar and nu is equal to 5 and 0 0.1 sigma is equal to 0 0.1 provided to us in the example n equal to 100 provided to us. So divided by square root of 100. That means I can write that is equal to over here. This is nothing but uh, x bar minus 5 divided by 0 0.1 square root of 100 means 10 and that is greater than or equal to 0 0.027 0 0.027 but what is this if you write like this you are going to get you are going to get that is equal to two times probability of not x but now it is z greater than or equal to right z greater than or equal to yes please what is my z value my z value is nothing but we are not equal to zero point uh, this is 10 will go over here and 0 0.27 if you find this 0 0.27 this is 5 okay and you are going to get that is equal to 2.7 this 2.7 that is equal to probability of z greater than 2.7, right? If you use table, I think table A3 or something like this, I don't know exact number, I think it is A3, if I'm not making a mistake. Yeah, table A3, z score, right? Uh, table A3, page number 735, 36. So table A3, page 735, 736, 735 and 736, normal curve. Okay, so z score equal to this one, and this is nothing but because it is greater than you can write two into one minus, one minus probability of z less than or equal to 2.7. If you use this tab number, it is two into one minus 0 0.00, sorry, 0 0.99965. I have over here 0 0.9965. That is equal to two times one minus 0 0.9965. That means it is 0 0.0035. And that is equal to 0 0.007. You can see over here, my probability is extremely small. It is between zero and one. Probability is between zero and one. And my probability is 0 0.5 reasonably okay. But here 0 0.007 somewhere over here. So probability is extremely small. And therefore, one, one would experience by chance that X bar would be 0. 007 millimeters from the mean that only seven out of that is seven out of thousand seven out of thousand experiments right so seven out of thousand experiments one would experience by chance that x bar would be or mean would be really very small or mean would be uh, mean would be 2.7 means you can say 0 0.027 millimeter millimeter from the uh, from the mean from the mean you can add 
seven by thousand, seven in thousand experiments, which is really very low. And that's why whatever the number is given to us. As a result, we can say that this experiment with x bar equal to 5.027, whatever is provided to us, certainly does not give the supporting evidence to the conjecture new equal to five, right? And in, that's why we can say it is strongly refutes, right? We can strongly reject this hypothesis. We can strongly reject this hypothesis. So that's how you can solve this example, guys. <laughs> Mm. <clears throat> we can solve this example, okay. This is your Z value, don't forget this thing. This is your Z value. All this part is nothing but your Z. So your Z is greater than 2.7, right? 0 0.027. Actually, that is nothing, but I don't know why I wrote it down 0 0.027. It has to be 2.7, right? So let me write 2.7. It is better to write over here 2.7. Yes, 2.7. So that is really don't equal to this one. <clears throat> Other way around, if you don't get confused, if you say that uh, why it is 2.7, because actually you know what I'm doing, doing over here, just dividing both the sides by 0 0.1 by 10. So 0 0.1 by 10 or square root of 100, 0 0.1 square root of 100, and you're going to get this number. So that's the reason, nothing else, not a big deal. Okay. Now, let me clear the screen and now let's go for, again, the book example. Couple examples are there. So let me go over one more example. And I'm not going to solve that example because that's really very simple so that we can go then after for the um, practice test assignment, I mean to say, yeah, practice test assignment or you can say the homework assignment. Okay, so let me stop sharing this one and let me go for a book again. So if you go for a book, you're gonna get, next example is like this. Traveling between two campuses of a university in a city via shuttle bus takes an average 80, 28 minutes with a standard deviation of See, on an average, 28 minutes means new equal to or new x bar equal to 28 minutes. And the standard division sigma equal to just five minutes, sigma. In a given week, a bus transported passengers 40 times, so n equal to 40. What is the probability that the average transport time <coughs> was more than 30 minutes? Means probability of x bar greater than 30. That's what we are looking for, x bar greater than 30. And this 30, you can write your mean is equal to 28, sigma equal to, what is my sigma? Sigma is equal to uh, 28 minutes with the standard deviation of five minutes. Standard deviation is five minutes, why sigma is equal to three? So I think it's a printing mistake over here, guys. Please change the number, it's a printing mistake. It has to be five over here, sigma equal to five. And I think, I don't, oh yeah, five is mentioned here. So I think there's a printing mistake. Sigma has to be five. Okay, so greater than or equal to greater than 30. So I would say that it is five. I would like to mention one important thing over here. Uh, what is the probability that the average transport time was more than 30 minutes? What is the probability that average transport, transport time is actually 28 minutes, but average time, transport time is 20, uh, 30 minutes. I assume the mean time is measured to the nearest minute. Assume the mean time is measured to the nearest minute, right? Mean time is measured to the nearest minute. Okay, that means it is five minutes, six minutes, something like that, nearest minute, not in terms of seconds or like milliseconds like this. Okay, so new equal to this one and x when n equal to 40, since the time is measured on a continuous scale, the nearest minute x bar greater than 30. Now x is strictly greater than 30. How can you measure a time? X is strictly greater than 30. If it is strictly greater than 30, in that case, you can always start with point half minute because it is in mean time is in terms of minute. You can say half minute. 
it's very awkward to say that one by two, one by three minutes, one by four minutes, but half minutes makes some sense. So always, whenever you have this type of example, if you are greater than, if you're in the greater than domain, always go for half more, half minute more, suppose it's 30 here, 30.5. If it is less than, then 30, then we are, we are going to measure, we're going to count 29.5, something like that. That is the important criteria over here in this example. And that's the reason why I took this example. Okay, so now my, X bar minus 28, my X bar, I don't, I can't take 30 because 30 is, is strictly greater than, and it is thumb, it measures in terms of the minutes. That's why we have to count a little bit more. Usually the criteria is like this. We go for half minute more or less. So point half. So it is uh, 30.5, new is 28, five is my Sigma, N is equal to 40, and my Z is equal to, this is my Z, and my Z, if you count this one, if you count this one, you're going to get my Z is greater than or equal to 3.60. Actually, this one is not required. Whenever you want, you can just write Z bar equal to X bar minus, you know, Z equal to X bar minus nu divided by sigma over square root of N, and then just plug the value over here. So in that case, you can, you're jumping from here to here, directly, directly here to here. This step is not required. You can write that one separately. That's what usually I prefer. We'll do that thing in the examples. And this is nothing but if you use a table, again, you're going to get the probability is again 0 0.0008, extremely small probability. That means this, what is the probability that the average transport time more than 30 minutes is absolutely, absolutely refute, right? That means that is not possible. We don't support this hypothesis. So this is only a slight change that the average time of one bus trip will exceed 30 minutes. That's why we refute the hypothesis. Right, we don't support the hypothesis. Okay, guys, and then after the last part of this one is nothing but the sampling distribution of difference between two means. So difference between two means, now you have, you don't have just one mean, but you have one, two means, new one and new two. Whenever you have two means, new one and new two, your formula will be slightly different. <clears throat> slightly different and the engineer was um, in the previous example if you consider that engineer example of uh, case study 8.1 so it deals with the notion of the statistical inference on a single mean nu the engineer was interested in supporting a conjecture regarding a single population mean single population mean right uh, a far more important application involved two populations so now we have look at over here two populations. So far more important applications involves two populations. They are given over here, two populations. A, scienti a scientist or engineer may be interested in a comparative experiment in which two manufacturing models, one and two to be compared. So two models are now being compared. And so many times we have plenty of applications based on this one. I don't want to go through all these things. Again, just keep this in mind that the second population is independent. So when you do like this at that time, suppose you have N1 is first population and the sample size of N2 selected from the second population that is independent of the samples from the first population. So second population independent, uh, N2 is always independent from the first population N1 because now you have two means, two means two populations, two means new one, new two, two populations, N1, N2, and this N2, whenever you see N1 is okay, it's always independent because you are select, selecting first time. But when you select N2 at that time, make sure that it is independent from, independent of N1. So what can we say about the sampling distribution of the difference between X bar and uh, X bar and minus X1 bar and X2 bar? for repeated samples of size N1 and N2, and that is given in this form, X theorem 8.3. If independent samples of size N1 and N2 are drawn at random, random from two populations, discrete or continuous. See, that is now for discrete or continuous, whatever it may be, it is now for both of them. So independent sample size N1 and N2 are drawn at random from two populations, either discrete or random, with mean newer and new two, the variance sigma one square and sigma two square, everything is different respectively because new one related to sigma one square and N one and new two related to sigma two square and N two. Then the sampling distribution of difference of means X bar X one bar, X one bar minus X two bar is approximately normally distributed with mean and variance new X1 minus X2 is equal to new one because new is same. So new one minus new two and sigma square previously used 
sigma sigma square divided by n1 or n. Here is sigma 1 square divided by n plus sigma 2 square divided by n2. And hence, my z-score is x1 minus x2. It was just x bar. Now, x1 bar minus x2 bar minus instead of nu, nu1 minus nu2. And square root of sigma divided by uh, sigma divided by square root of n. Now, sigma 1 square because of the plus sign, everything that is under square root sign, please. Don't write sigma square divided by square root of n1 because plus sign is there in between. So don't do that thing, please. So sigma 1 square divided by n1 plus sigma 2 square divided by n2 and whole square root. So is approximately a standard normal variable. Is approximately a standard normal variable. And if both n1 and n2 are larger than the larger than or equal to 30, just like our previous case, the normal approximation for the distribution of x1 bar, x2 bar is very good when the underlying distribution are not too far away from the normal, right? Slightly skewed. Whenever, or however, even when n1 and n2 are less than 30, the normal approximation is reasonably good, except when the population are decidedly non-normal, right? When n1 and n2 are less than 30, the normal approximation is reasonably good except when the population are decided it means you have to have the normal distribution at that time when n is strictly less than 30. If it is greater than 30, slightly right skewed or left skewed, that is valid, but for less than 30, it's not possible. It means you have to have another way that if your sample size is really small, at that time you have to have normal distribution. Normal distribution, if your sample size is large enough at that time, slight skewed is allowed. Okay, and another case study that is uh, actually case study, but in terms of the example, so same thing, guys. So I don't want to write anything. You will directly solve the examples. Two independent experiments are run in which two different types of paints are compared. 18 and one equal to 18. Please keep this in mind. 18 specimens are printed using type A and type A and the drying time in hours is recorded for each. The same is done, means again 18. N2 is N1 and N2 are 18. The same is done with type B. The population standard deviation are both known to be equal to one, means sigma one and sigma two that is equal to one, right? So N1, N2, 18, sigma one, sigma two, one, and what else? And you are given Type B, the independent runs with two different paints are compared. 18 specimens are compared. Okay, sounds good. So, assuming that the mean drying time, what is the drying? The drying time, A drying time, right? In hours is recorded for each. Assuming the mean drying time are equal to two types of the paints. Assuming that the mean drying time is equal to two types of the paint, new one minus new two. See? New one minus new two. Now new one and new two they are same. So new one minus new two is always zero. So just consider new one minus new two or new a, paint a and paint b. You can say new. You can write not new one. You can write new suffix a, new suffix b. That is simply zero like this. So sigma square. That is sigma a square, sigma one square over n one, sigma two square over n two or a and b. 118 and 118. That is equal to one by nine because this is one and this is 18. So this is for dual, right? I mean to say sampling of the difference of two means. Okay, <clears throat> and we have a figure z-score because you know the z-score definition is x1 minus x2, right? So x1 minus x2 that is equal to one corresponding x values are given to us that is equal to one. Look at over here, it is already given to us x1 minus x2 that is greater than 1. So x1 minus x2 that is equal to 1 minus nu1 minus nu2, 0. And we figured it out, our sigma 1 square this formula that is equal to 1 ninth square root, so it is 3. So probability of z greater than 3, that is equal to 1 minus probability of z less than 3. Use the table is the answer. So that's how you can solve the example. And without wasting time, let me just go over some of the examples given to you in the exercise problems. Uh, example number eight point, uh, I don't think that it is required because 8.18 .18 is the simplest one that's based on the, anyway, just read this example. I just would like to go through a few of the examples. 8.18, .18, if the standard deviation of a mean for the sampling distribution of the random sample of size 36, 
n equal to 36 from a large or infinite population look at over here is two standard deviation that is sigma or i would say <coughs> sigma is equal to that is number is given to you right so uh sigma x bar because large population is that is equal to sigma sigma suffix x bar equal to 2 is given to you how large must be the sample size become if the standard deviation is to be equal to 1.2 standard deviation is to be equal to 1.2 right means sigma x bar equal to 1.2 how large population you require means what is your value of n that is a question that's what we need we need to figure it out okay so let me stop sharing this one and let me now start my whiteboard <laughs> So example 8.8 .8 says that, 8.8 .8 in my bed, 8.18 .8 says that, uh, first of all, n equal to 36 and sigma x bar is equal to 2. Now you know this thing that sigma x bar is equal to sigma over square root of n, n equal to 36 means here it is 36 n square root. So it is 6 and sigma, we are looking for sigma x bar is given to you. So this implies that, this implies the sigma is equal to two times six and that is equal to 12, right? So now I have my sigma, sigma is equal to 12, okay? And it says that if sigma x bar is 1.2, then what will happen? Sigma x bar equal to 1.2, right? So then again, sigma x bar equal to sigma over square root of n, sigma x bar is 1.2. Sigma, I figured it out, that is equal to 12, and this I'm looking for n. So this implies that my square root of n, that is equal to 12 divided by 1.2. 12 divided by 1.2, that is equal to, yes, uh, that is equal to 10, right? because 12 divided by 10. So here that 12, 12 get cancelled out, so it is 10. So this implies that my n is equal to 100. So for my uh, variance, I mean, the standard deviation 1.2, 1.2, I have to have my population n equal to 100, n equal to 100. That's how you can solve this example. Okay, let's go for the next one. Next one is, oops, oops, oops. Uh, next one, I would say 8.20. Given the discrete uniform population, fx equal to one third, x runs from two four six, otherwise zero. Find the probability that the random sample of size 54 selected with replacement will yield a sample mean greater than 4.1, but less than 4.4. Okay, 4.1 and less than 4.4. Assume that the means are measured to the nearest tenth. Near tenth means it's 4.1, just tenth, 4.4 tenth. So that's what we has we assumed that means are measured to the nearest tenth. Okay, so let me start with this one. It's one third. Okay, x equal to two, two four six. That's the only thing we need to keep this thing in. We need to keep in mind. Okay, so I would say that example number eight point. Uh, 20, we say, right? So, so 8.20 and equal to 54, right? Yes, yeah, sample size 54. Okay, new x bar that is equal to with yield a sample mean greater than 4.4, greater than 4.4, strictly greater than 4.4 and less than 4.4. Okay, so what I'm going to do. Please, guys, please keep this thing in mind. So I'm going to take that is equal to uh, mean size is selected one yield. Okay. Find the probability that the random sample of size 54 selected with the replacement will yield the sample mean greater than 4.4 and less than 4.4. Assume that the means are measured to the near 10th place. Sounds good. Okay. So I would say that that is equal to new x bar that is equal to four and sigma x bar that is equal to sigma over square root of n and that is equal to sigma over square root of n. How can I find this one, guys? <laughs> Excuse me. So I can write something like this. So my new is nothing but, look at here guys, for this particular example, I am taking help of some other things. So my new, if you recall your chapter number four, x into fx, new is equal to 
x into fx that is equal to x is equal to 2 4 and 6 right x is equal to 2 4 and 6 so i'm going to write that is equal to uh, x into fx and what was my sigma square sigma square was nothing but summation of x minus nu square times fx x is equal to 2 4 and 6 so that is equal to uh, 2 minus nu equal to 4 square right nu equal to 4 square and 1 by 3 plus 4 minus 4 square and 1 by 3 this is 0 plus 6 minus 4 square and 1 by 3 that is equal to 2 square is 4 so 4 3 plus 6 minus 4, 2 square is 4 and 4, 3. So that is equal to 8 third. You must be wondering that why I wrote it down directly. You can count this one also that nu is equal to summation of x times fx and x is equal to 2, 4 and 6. So that is equal to 2 into 1 third plus 4 into third plus 6 into third. So 4, 3, 4, 6 and 10 and 12. So 12 divided by 3 and that is equal to 4. So that's equal to 4. That's the reason I just wrote it down my nu equal to 4 and sigma is nothing but my 8 3 so this is equal to 8 third divided by n equal to 54 so square root of 54 and that is equal to if you use this one you're going to get that is equal to 354 something i don't know but uh, sigma x is equal to 83 uh, this is my sigma square right so my sigma i have to have square root sign square root of 8 83 that is equal to 8 divided by 53 multiplied by 3 54 multiplied by 3 54 multiplied by 3 you're going to get one number and that is your sigma that is your sigma right uh, 9 multiplied by 6 is 53 okay and here i can write uh, 4 multiplied by 2 that is equal to 8 so square root is 2 out and here it is 3 so mostly i think you are going to get 2 out and 3 and here it is another 3 so you're going to get 3 here because 4 and 2 2 and here it is 2 and here it is 3 3 3 is a 9 yeah so 2 third so x bar equal to 2 third now guys look at over here that my z1 is nothing but z1 is equal to x bar minus nu divided by sigma square root of n and that is equal to x bar minus nu sigma square root of n sigma x bar already i figured it out that is equal to 2 by 3 so denominator is 2 by 3 and here i have 4.1 so 4.1 minus 4 and you are going to get one number same way z2 is equal to you're going to get uh, 4.4 minus 4 divided by 2 by 3 and you're going to get one number right one number so probability of 4.1 is less than x bar is less than 4.4 that is equivalent to say that probability of this number less than z less than this second number second number and that is equal to i would say suppose here it is what uh, let me write suppose z1 and z2 like this so probability of z less than z2 whatever number you are getting just plug it over here minus probability of z less than z1 plug the numbers and whatever you are going to get that must be your answer so i think you can use this one and try to find the answer not a big deal right try to find the answer so that's how you can solve example number 8.20 and now i would like to go for a very important example these two examples are okay most likely people don't ask this thing but the important examples are 8.22 and 8.25 i would say in my opinion okay so let me just go for this one let me clear this picture and let me go for one more example uh, 8. Point 22. Nice example. A, B, and C parts are there. The heights of 1000 students are approximately normally distributed with a mean of 174.5 centimeters and a standard deviation of 6.9 centimeters. Suppose two 
100 random samples of size 25 are drawn from this population and the means recorded to the nearest tenth. Yeah, you can see nearest tenth because just 0.5, so nearest tenth, okay, of this that centimeter. Determine the mean and the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of X bar. The number of standard mean and standard deviation of the sampling distribution X bar. Okay, fine. Sounds good. That's what we need to uh, figure it out. Okay. Guys, just keep this in, uh, keep this thing in mind. Now, second example, the number of sample means that fall between 172.5 and 170. See, fall exactly between 172.5 and 175.8, something like that. 172.5 and 170, 172.5 and 175.8. That means we have to consider over here, little less, I told you, just go 0.5, half minute or like this, half. So 170, instead of 172.5, I'm going to consider over here, my X bar value that is equal to, sorry. X bar value I'm going to consider 172.45, okay? because it is between 175 and so just little this size 172.45 and here it is 175.85 on the other side. So please keep this thing in mind in part B. The number of sample means falling between uh, below 172 centimeters. Below 172, that's fine. Below 172, that's not a big deal, right? Below 172. <clears throat> so again here 172, again below 172, that means again 172, just half less. So it is once so I'm going to count 171.5, something like that. 171.95 because it's just 0.5 less, right? So 171.95 or something like that. That's what I'm going to count. So please keep this thing in mind when we solve the example. Okay. The number of sampling means 172 centimeters. 172 centimeters, again, 172 centimeters, 171.95, I'm going to measure over here. 171.95 here, 172.5 means 45, 175.8 means 85, 172.0 means 172.45, because less than, right? So 172.45, okay. Uh, the number of sampling means falling below 172, so 172.85, uh, sorry, 172.0, mm, 172 so I would say 171.95, right, slightly less, 0 0.05, slightly less. Okay, that's what we do. And please make sure you read the example. Uh, suppose that 200 random, 200 random random samples of size 20, size 25, you are n equal to 25, but there are 200 samples, random samples are there. So please don't forget that part. You have to multiply your answer by two, uh, by 200. 200 random samples of size 25 are drawn from this population and the means recorded to the nearest tenth of this one determine this three. Let me start one by one, guys. This is really very good example. So example number 8.22, 8.22, my A part, first of all, it says that N is equal to 25, N is equal to 25, right? Then new of X bar that is equal to new and that is equal to for A part, it is one what? It says that uh, the mean and the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of this one. Okay, 174.5 centimeter is the mean value given to you. So mean is equal to 174.5 centimeter for this one. 174.5, 174.5 centimeter. And sigma x bar that is equal to sigma divided by square root of n. And you are given sigma is equal to 6.9, if I'm not wrong. So sigma is equal to 6.9 centimeters that is provided to us, centimeters. So sigma is equal to 6.9, n is equal to 25. So here it is 5, 6.9 divided, 6 divided by 5. You are going to get 6, <coughs> 6 6.5. Let me take, take this here, this side. 6.59 divided by that is 1.38, 1.38. 
Okay, guys. So that is my A part. My B part says that Z one is equal to. Now you are given two numbers. One is the number of sample means that fall between one seventy two point five. So one seventy two point five and one fifty eight point eight centimeter. One fifty. I'm sorry. One seventy five point eight. One seventy five point eight. Both are inclusive. Inclusive word is being used. That's the reason we are doing this thing, right? So both are inclusive. Means this one is inclusive. This one is inclusive, and we are measuring this one. So that's why what we are going to do. That here we have to find something one seventy one one seventy two point five. So I'm going to write one seventy two point. Forty-five, and here I'm going to take one seventy-five point eighty-five because both are inclusive. These two numbers are inclusive, so that's the reason. That's the reason, right, guys? So I'm going to find my z one is equal to x bar minus nu divided by sigma x bar. You can say or That is equal to x bar is equal as I told you. This is my x bar value. This is my x bar and this is my x bar. So one seventy two point one seventy two point forty five minus new is equal to what is new one seventy four point five divided by sigma one point thirty eight. If you use your calculator, it is here negative one point forty nine. Same way, I can find my z two equal to again x bar minus nu, or you can write nu one and nu two and sigma x bar, x one bar, x two bar if you want, x two bar. So that is equal to one seventy five point eighty five minus one seventy four point five divided by one point thirty eight, one point thirty eight, and that is equal to. That is equal to zero point ninety eight. So what will happen? So probability of one seventy two point my bad forty five is less than x bar is less than one seventy five point eighty five is equal to probability of negative one point forty nine is less than c is less than zero point ninety eight and That is equal to zero point. Uh, if you use this one, that is, or you can write one more step if you want. That is equal to probability of z less than zero point ninety eight minus probability of z less than negative one point forty nine. Z uh, probability of z. So you're going to get over here what zero point eight three six five minus Zero point zero six eight one, and that is equal to zero point seven six eighty four. This is my B part. My C part says that uh, the number of sample means falling between one seventy two, falling below one seventy two centimeters, right? One seventy two centimeters inclusive. One seventy two centimeters inclusive means I'm going to consider one here. One seventy one point ninety five one seventy two point zero so one seventy so my z value over here that is equal to x bar minus nu divided by sigma x bar central limit theorem here it is you can see central limit theorem central limit theorem central limit theorem so x bar is equal to one seventy one point ninety five minus one seventy four point five divided by One point thirty eight, and that is equal to that is equal to negative one point eighty five. So therefore, probability of x bar is less than one seventy one point ninety five. That is equal to probability of z is less than negative one point eighty five, and that is equal to zero point zero three two two, zero point zero three two two. Now, guys, please keep this thing in mind. As I told you, hmm, just want to separate out my A, B, C, and C part. As I told you, therefore, what will happen that about 
because 200 out of, I think, yeah, 200 random samples of size 25, 200 multiplied by 0 0.0322, that is equal to six sample means six. You have to mention this thing in terms of real life or the problems is asked to you. Six sample means fall below 172.0 centimeters. Here you can write, therefore, the number of sample means the number of sample means between 172.5 and 175.8 centimeters centimeters inclusive is again 200 multiplied by this number point 0 0.7684 and that is equal to 154. So this is the answer. This is the answer. So that's how you can solve this example guys. Let me again save this one and let me clear the drawing. And now let's go for the last example. Again, based on central limit theorem, example number 8.25, the last one, I will stop. So let me start with uh, sharing my book again. So if you share the book, I mean, so if you look at this example, 8 point, uh, which one? 25 and 26, which one is better? I think 26 is just similar to 22. So that is fine. Let's go for 8.25. It says that the average life of a bread making machine is seven years with a standard deviation of one year. Mean is seven, sigma is one. Assuming that the lives of these machines follow approximately a normal distribution, Fine. The probability that the mean life of a random bed, uh, random sample of nine such machine fall between six point four and seven point two years. Six point four and seven point two years, right, guys? And the value of x to the right of which fifteen percent. Now look at over here, guys. This is you know that reverse z score, reverse normal distribution kind of things. When the area is given to you, means x value is given to you, and uh, I mean, Z value is going to you and we are looking for X value, right? In uh, chapter five, uh, chapter six, same example is here based on this random variable. So that's, that's why I just would like to uh, go for this one. This is the nice one. Otherwise, I think other examples, 26 is okay. Not a big deal. So let me go for this example. Just keep this in mind, 6.4 and 7.2 nothing is mentioned inclusive or like this you can work with 6.4 and 7.2 not a big deal right just keep this in mind but if like this in the previous example inclusive when this word is in mentioned at that time you have to make sure about just 0 0.05 above and below okay so 8.25 let me stop sharing this one and last example let me start here of today's class, so 8.20, 8 8.25. The average life of a bread making machine, okay, let me write like this, average life is bread making machine, right? Okay, that is new is equal to seven years. Seven years, you can say new X bar, you can say new, both are same. And with a standard deviation one year, so sigma is equal to one year, standard deviation one year. Assuming that the lives of these machines follow approximately a normal distribution, find the approximately the mean life of a random variable, random sample of nine machines falling between 6.2 and 7.2. Okay, so my A part says that probability of 6.4 is less than X is less than 7.2. And that is equal to, first of all, I need to find my Z score. So Z is nothing but X bar minus nu divided by Sigma X bar, right? And that is nothing but for one case I have, it is 6.4 minus seven divided by sigma x bar that is equal to sigma is 
one and n is equal to nine years, right? Am I right? Yeah, sam oh, sorry. Random sampling probability of life of a random sampling of nine such machines so n equal to nine. So one over one over square root of nine that is equal to three, one third, right? And if you use this one, you're going to get negative one over negative one point eight. Same way, z is equal to second number that is equal to x bar minus nu over sigma x bar. And x bar now this time it is seven point two minus seven divided by uh, one third, and that is equal to what seven point uh, what that is equal to zero point six. So zero point six. So that is equivalent to say that uh, probability of negative one point eight is less than z is less than zero point six is less than zero point six. And that is equal to probability of z less than 0 0.6 minus probability of z less than negative 1.8. If you use this one, you're going to get 0 0.6898. 6898. That is A part. Now B part says that uh, um, you have the seven years that is your mean. Look at over here. This is your this was your mean standard deviation x bar that is equal to one third. So that is equal to one third and mean was mu equal to seven years. That was the case over here. And that lies between 6.4 is somewhere over here and 7.2 is somewhere over here. So we figured it out, this one. Okay, okay. Now, second part says that the value of X to the right of which 15% of the means computed from the random samples of size nine would fall. 15% that means value 15% of right, your new equal to seven. And here it is, this one is 15% of 0 0.15, 15%. That's the meaning. See here, that means now the Z value is provided to us because that's the area, area, right? 0 0.15, 15% um, is provided to you. Okay, so 0 0.15, you know the technique, 0 0.15, that is equal to one minus 0 0.15 because it is right. Right of 0 0.15, right? Right of 0 0.15. That means total area is one. So we are starting from here to here. So here to here, that is one minus 0 0.15. One minus, that is equal to 0 0.85. So if you try to look at Z table and this 0.85 value, right? You are going to get, that is, this implies that your z is equal to 1.04. 1 and 0 0.04, 1.0 and 4, that will match for this 0 0.85 value. So my z score is 0 0.85. That's how you can figure it out. And once you have this z score, then you can write, since z is equal to 1.04, my z bar is equal to x bar minus nu divided by sigma. So this implies that my x bar is equal to nu plus z bar, it's not z bar, it's simply c, nu plus z times sigma x bar. Nu, you know this thing that is equal to seven. <sighs> nu is equal to, am I right guys? So this is x or you can write small x bar two. Okay. So nu is equal to seven plus my sigma x bar. That was nothing but sigma x bar. I figured it out. What is my sigma x bar? My sigma x bar that is equal to one third, right? Okay, so one third times my Z score is nothing but what I found Z score 1.04. So I can write 1.04, 1.04. If you use your calculator, you're going to get that is equal to 7.35. And that is your answer. That is your answer. So this way you can solve the examples based on central limit theorem, guys. We finished article 8.1 to 8.4 8.4 today. And next time we are going to finish article 8.5 and 8.6. 8.5 simply based on sampling distribution of S square. And 8.6 is very important. T distribution, very important. Next chapter based on the same thing, T distribution. So please keep this thing in mind. Is all these things are really very important. So let me stop over here, guys. I think we did a number of plenty of things today. Thank you so much. And I'll see you next time. Let me save this file for you guys so that I can download this one. Uh, and
clear the picture. Okay. Let me stop recording.